Good morning to you. Nice to be with you, Michael. Your mea culpa session begins now. How could the government get this so wildly wrong? Well, two things have happened, Michael. The first is that Treasury, in the midst of the height of the pandemic here in Australia, forecast that 6.5 million Australians would be covered by the JobKeeper program at a cost of $130 billion. But as you know, we had great success in flattening out the curve and we went from having a rise in the number of daily cases at 22 per cent in the week leading up to the announcement of the JobKeeper program to now having 35 days straight where the number of new cases has increased by less than half a per cent per day. And so that health miracle has had a real economic benefit, hence the lower number of people who are going to be using the JobKeeper program as a result. The second thing that's happened is that when around a thousand businesses of the nearly one million businesses that formerly enrolled for JobKeeper, they incorrectly filled in a form with the number where they were supposed to put the number of eligible employees in their business for the JobKeeper program, but ended up putting the dollar amount they thought that they would be getting for the JobKeeper mm. program. And why wasn't so that picked up? Why, why didn't workers, somebody at got... the ATO pick that up? It's been running for, what, eight weeks or so. Weren't suspicions raised when all of these small businesses and sole traders magically had 1,500 employees? Well, the ATO has explained that and apologised for that because what they saw from about a thousand businesses was that instead of putting the number two, for example, in that box of eligible employees, they put 3,000. Now, that data was then collected and informed uh, the ATO's estimation that the number of people covered by the program was around six and a half million. Now, of course, we now know that is incorrect, but importantly, that incorrect data was not used to pay any one under the JobKeeper program, other uh, verifiable data like tax file numbers and other declarations by businesses were. So the good news for the taxpayer is uh, people weren't underpaid or overpaid based on those incorrect submissions into the JobKeeper program. And the good news for the taxpayer is that the government will now have to raise $60 billion less in debt. Uh, to, to pay for the various initiatives that we've announced during the global pandemic. I want to talk about it just a moment. Will you front this Senate committee inquiry investigating coronavirus to explain this in detail? Well, Michael, you know that this is just a political stunt from the Labor Party. When they were last in government, they accepted the convention, which is that House of Representative ministers do not appear before mm -hmm. Senate committees. Well, because Scott Senate Morrison committee appeared before a, like a Senate committee Senate. when he was an immigration minister. And, and Julia Gillard, uh, Greg Combay, uh, Peter Garrett, uh, Kevin Rudd didn't ap appear before Senate committees. So this is just again a Labor stunt. Um, Treasury officials, uh, uh, Senate min um, ministers from the government uh, go before those but the buck uh, committees stops with you, and Treasurer. those estimate processes. The, bu the buck stops with you. Well, of course. And of course, um, I take responsibility uh, for the estimates variation. I'm accountable in the House of Representatives uh, for my department and for my portfolio, and will continue to do so. And I continue to have great confidence uh, in the work that is done by my wonderful department. But I... you have to understand that we are facing a one in a century pandemic and the ability to forecast accurately the number of people that were taking up the JobKeeper program was inherently difficult and that is something that the Labor Party uh, knows full and okay, well but, but is obviously seeking to make a political forecast point aside, one, th one, th situation. one thing we, we do know is you have this $60 billion, as you say, you may not need to borrow it, but also on the other side of the coin, would you consider spending that money or giving that money to people who currently can't get the JobKeeper allowances, people like staff at universities, uh, casuals, migrant workers? Well, we have said uh, that we're not planning to make wholesale changes to the eligibility Okay, so that's a no. So you're, you're, not, you're not expanding it? Well, we've got no plans to make wholesale changes to the eligibility criteria. When it comes to universities, what the government has done has uh, guaranteed their grant funding uh, based on the number of domestic students uh, pre-COVID, uh, so to ensure mm. that they're going to continue to receive that money. Okay. When it comes to uh, shorter term casuals, uh, as you know, we have the job seeker payment and that was effectively a doubling of the old new start payment, the safety net at $1,100. When it comes to the arts sector, we've already made $27 million worth of announcements for 
indigenous artists, for regional uh, artists and organisations, and also for a group called Support Act to help artists in difficult times. Okay, would you when consider it comes to the tourism sector? Yeah, I want to ask you about the tourism well, sector. Well, uh, on, uh, on that, would you consider for the tourism sector and for that matter other sectors of the economy really struggling, extending the job seeker payment for those sectors once it expires? Job keeper, well, sorry. Again, when it comes. Well, when it comes to JobKeeper, we'll be undertaking a review in the month of June, uh, Michael, and obviously uh, we'll look at how it's being implemented, we'll look at what's happening in various sectors, and you're right, the tourism sector uh, could be one sector that's going to be in need of, of further support, and that's what we will, uh, we will look at in the context of the economic situation at the time, because with the tourism sector, uh, you're, you're going to continue to see our international borders close for some time, whereas with the uh, hospitality sector or with the arts and recreation sector, we're going to start to see the easing of the restrictions as agreed to by National Cabinet and it's estimated that some 850,000 okay. people will be back in work as a result of those three stages of restrictions being lifted. So that's the way to get people back into a job. Yep. Easing just, restrictions just, following the medical advice. We're just about out of time, Treasurer. Are there any circumstances in which the government would consider extending the supplement for the job seeker recipients and perhaps making it permanent or do you still plan on returning turning the old new start payment to $40 a day. Well, we've always been very consistent in announcing our programs uh, that were in place for a temporary period of time uh, to deal with the impact of uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Okay. It's so you won't, you, won't ex you, won't extend, you won't extend job seeker. We've been very clear that when it comes to job seeker, job keeper payments, the other initiatives, they're temporary, they're targeted, they're proportionate to the challenge we face. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, thank you so much for joining us on News Breakfast. Always good to be with you, Michael.